Hi everybody, so we began this journey with the Thunderbolt generator. We made some simple coils on bolts because they were easy to make and anybody could make them. Because that makes you start to think about easy coils to wind, because winding coils is a pain in the neck that everybody hates. And there are easier ways of doing it. For instance, we looked at the serpentine coil and then of course we looked at the foul harbour coil. You can't start looking at coils without somebody mentioning to you the Rodan coil. <laughs> the Rodan coil is um, tremendously popular and lots of interest in it and the brainchild of a chap called Marco Rodan. Now Marco Rodan came up with um, uh, mathematics that he called vortex-based mathematics. Vortex-based mathematics is based on the number nine because nine apparently has some interesting properties about it that most reflect the real world. Now, that's an interesting view, but all integers have properties about them that create patterns. The base 9 is counting 0 to 9. He discounts 0. Other bases are also possible. We use base 10 because we've got 10 fingers. Uh, base 60 has been used, which is why we get 360 degrees in a circle. There are lots of different bases that have been used over time and lots of different bases that are used now, like binary and octal and hexadecimal and computing. So changing your base to fit patterns is something that's quite common, makes it more understandable when you're dealing with different things. In my mind, there's nothing special particularly about base 9. And does base 9 reveal patterns? Well, yes, it would do. It's all bases reveal patterns and all integers contain patterns within them, irrespective of the base. This is why Stephen Hawking wrote uh, God Gave Us the Integers. Integers, numbers, are fascinating things that we can look at and find patterns, but there really isn't a magical bear in the sky pointing north. There's a bunch of stars and we impose the pattern onto, us, onto it and it tells us something about our world. That's how I tend to see integer patterns. They can be revealing, they can be interesting, they can tell you something about the world, but the pattern is just a pattern you've noticed. Now, Rodin's mathematics, uh, I think, is unnecessarily complex to a degree. But that aside, what he does is he uses this um, vortex-based maths to create a set of patterns. Turns out, if you take the series 1 to 9, multiply it by 2, take away 1 and divide it, then you get a series of repeating numbers. And that's, that seems a bit... You know, I don't know, constructed to me, but you get this series of repeating numbers. In case you don't know what the modulo, uh, modulo is, let's take 5 and divide it by 2. The answer would be 2 mod 1. The mod is the whole integer remainder when you do a division. And so if you divide that series of numbers by 9, up until 9, of course, you will just get 1. Beyond that, you start getting the mod of it. So um, 10 divided by 9 is 1 mod 1, and so on. So you get this repeating set of numbers, which, of course, you would do, but you still get this repeating set of numbers. Now, according to um, Rodin, the numbers 3, 6, and 9, are in, in base 9, using that modulus division, uh, follow a sequence in which real things flow. So energy flows through it, electricity flows through it, water makes those patterns when we get spirals and vortexes. Uh, and that's what he bases this whole thing on. Now, if you were to take a series of numbers in, in, in a table and do that division on them and take the modulus, you'll get a table of repeating sequences of numbers, which, which you would, but you get this table. You can map that table onto the surface of a toroid. Not quite sure why a toroid, but you can map it onto a toroid and you will get essentially the Rodan coil. That's what the Rodan coil is. So you can make a number map if you like, uh, and it's called a Rodan map. You know, map it onto a toroid if you want, and that will give you different configurations of a Rodan coil. Now, other people haven't really wanted to wind toroids, and I'm not surprised. They're even worse than coils. 
And so there is a flat version that has been developed. That toroid is then projected into two dimensions to create a star coil with a Rodin winding. Now, I don't intend on working out what a different star coil would be because there's an awful lot of um, working out that has been done. But essentially, the angle of the wire to the centre of the toroid has to be at 30 degrees, apparently. There's uh, an awful lot of them have been done with 12 points. So we're going to take a 12 point and wind a Rodin flat coil. So to do this, I've got a wooden disc and I've drilled 12 holes at 6 millimetres at 30 degrees apart, so it's like a clock face. I've also numbered them 1 to 12 going round, and I'm going to wind the wire on those. But I've got these little plastic bits, they came off um, shelf units actually, they, they go in the wall, that goes into the unit and it protects the shelf. But it also protects the wire from the thread of the bolt and we put one of those on each of these on with the washer on with a nut and we're going to wind on those white plastic bits so to wind this i put a bit of tape to hold the length of wire at the back and we're going to begin at pin one and what you do is you count six including the pin you're on so one two three four five six takes us to six and we go to six and then we count six on again and that will take us to eleven Six on again will take us to four. So you're just counting sixes from the pin and including the pin that you're on. And that takes us to four. Count on six will go to nine. Count on six will go back to two. Count on six will go to seven. And so on. So you count on six including the pin that you're on until you get back to number one again. 12, 10, 3, and 1. Oops, sorry, 8. And one. There we go. So we have fat wound the first winding, and you do it that way, and you just keep on doing that until you get absolutely pig sick of it, and however many winds you want to put on. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, that went surprisingly quickly. Now, this wire is pretty thin. If I'd done a thicker wire, it would probably hold itself together, but there's no chance it's going to be with this thin stuff. So I tied all the nodes with a bit of cotton string and put a spot of super glue on because that, uh, well, it turns a cotton string rock hard and stops it undoing. I also want a center on this. So I've got a disc of wood, the original center. I can put that on. There we go. And I put some hot glue around there to create a center. Then we'll try and take it off. <laughs> there we are, one Rodan coil. Okay, the reason I wanted a centre in it, because right here I've got a turntable with some magnets and they're set north, south, north, south. And I just want to see if this does anything at all, actually. So I'm just going to hold that above there and spin those magnets and see if we get a reading. And we do, it's a few millivolts, uh, and it's dependent on the speed of this and the distance that is away from the magnetic field. So it's certainly not astounding knock your socks off stuff for a quick and dirty test. But I'm actually more interested in it for a, a more prosaic reason. It reminds me very much of the um, Owl Harbour coil. Uh, with these bits here. Remember the foul harbour also bent back on itself. This crosses over to the other side. So I was interested in would it be an easier way of doing something a bit like the foul harbour. Now lots of stuff is written about this and, and it's supposed to be the key to the answer of every question you've ever asked the universe. I'm not sure if that's true or not but like I say I'm a bit more prosaic about it. It certainly wasn't difficult to wind. It wound quite 
quickly. A bit worried about these being a bit flimsy, which is why I put all these knots in. But like I say, we used a thicker wire would hold itself. All we really need to do is get it to hold itself before we resin it, obviously, and that would give it the stiffness it needs. And it's clearly open to making a three phase if you wanted to. But that is how to go about making a um, Rodan coil. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.